Hi everybody, I'm Jack Hathaway and welcome to the March edition of Conversation Corner. I am joined as usual by my good friend and Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Jim Lehan. Jack. How are you doing, sir? Good, sir. All right, we've, uh, we've made it, uh, knock on wood, we've uh, almost made it through the winter. We're, uh, we're on the brink, though, of, of allegedly of a nor'easter on uh, Monday, I've heard. Anywhere that's between. a rumor. That's a rumor, all pure right. Speculation, pure rumor. So, Started uh, by the Rentham Board of Selectmen. We hope, uh, <laughs> we hope to get through this winter relatively unscathed uh, because we're still shoveling out from last winter. Um, we have a number of things we want to talk about. Um, we want to talk about the election, town meeting, the warrant for town meeting, uh, a little bit about the budget. Uh, we have some development going on town, and then we thought we would just uh, do a quick update on the public safety projects. Mm -hmm. So um, we have an election on May 3rd. So it's the first Tuesday in May. We have a number of seats uh, up for uh, contest, but uh, at the papers have been turned in at this point, and I know we have three, uh, three, contest, three con contested races. Three contested. Three contested right. races. I know uh, moderator, uh, Mr. Talleran and Mr. Rosenberg will, will go at it again, so that'll be entertaining. Uh, we have the constable. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Flaherty and uh, Mr. Fallon will, will again another rematch, and uh, the third one planning board. We planning have, board. Uh, actually, Three for two. Yeah, I don't have their name. I know Mr. Byron is up for re-election, and then we have two uh, newcomers uh, who are interested in seeking the, the one of the two seats. So uh, it's good. It's good to have some contested races. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and then uh, a week later we have town meeting. So. Uh, I know we wanted to spend a couple minutes going through the warrant for town meeting. Um, looks like it's a, uh, it's a nice, uh, I don't want to say light agenda, but it's, a, uh, it's, it's not one of our, we've gotten a little smarter as we've gotten older <laughs> here, and uh, it's, I think we have somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to 25 articles. Um, we, we have, uh, of course, the normal, we have the budget, mm -hmm. uh, we have the water department budget, the sewer budget. Well, we will have some capital items um, to discuss. Um, I think we don't have any, there are no zoning articles, which uh, some people will be excited about, uh, myself included. Um, we, we've, we're trying to push any zoning articles off to the fall, kind of our traditional uh, format. Um, but, uh, but we do have some community preservation articles. I know you are always taking an interest in the community preservation. Well, they, they uh, of course, will have their usual boilerplate ones, uh, which are the 10% for the various uh, components that make up community preservation. Um, they will also, uh, they're looking at a piece of property yeah. off of Main Street, uh, right down by the bridge, the old Miller, Br Miller Street, Br not Miller Street, excuse me. By Comey, um, well, by City Mill. Past City, City Mills, Mills right, uh, just past Franklin. City Mills. Yeah. Um, so by Comey Pond. Yeah, uh, it's actually a beautiful piece of property. Yeah. Um, and they've, I think, negotiated a very reasonable price. Uh, it'll probably be more open space conservation. It's by the pond right across from the old paint factory that's still yeah. there. Um, but it, it appears to be something that would be of good value to the town. Yeah. Um, very reasonable price. Uh, they've got a few other things that they're looking at as well. Um, I'm not sure that, in fact, I'm quite sure they're not going to make this warrant. They're still looking, I guess yep. is a good way to yep. say it. Um, they're looking to uh, just increase a little bit of their uh, capital for overhead uh, because their revenues are down. They're a little bit lower in terms of what they have so that they'll have some funds available for appraisals and things of that nature as opportunities come aboard. Uh, there'll be the annual um, allocation to the Affordable Housing Committee. Uh, which is part of their mission, and I think that's pretty much it. The, uh, uh, I apologize if you, I don't think you just said it, but uh, they were creating a revolving fund uh, 
related to the community right. preservation? Right, we, uh, we, we have a volunteer for the community gardens, which is down at Gump's. Um, I, I wish we'd, we kind of own the problem, so it, it's, we're the ones that really didn't get to it. Uh, but we do expect to get that going this year. And uh, the Lions have been very helpful. They have done a bunch of work down there. We've got some initial fencing done. Uh, that'll make it much easier to begin the process. Uh, we've got a volunteer. I'm, I'm meeting with her actually next Tuesday to uh, talk about how we put this all together. And, and CPC has brought forward an article to put a revolving fund around to basically support the garden. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll, I think, probably use it as a combination of um, residents that don't have the capacity to garden within their own properties, such as River's Edge or someone like that. And then something hopefully for the food bank too, which I think could be a wonderful cause. So it'll be some combination thereof, but uh, it'll be really fun to get that going. Yeah, that yeah. would be fun. Look forward to that. I, I do too. Um, for those uh, people who don't watch the Selectman's meeting, uh, and I actually was uh, absent from last week's meeting. You were excused. I was excused, thank you. And, and you were ill. I was ill. <laughs> so. I hope nobody has gotten this. Uh, I think we've all gotten it. <laughs> this horrible chest cold yeah. that uh, has been going around. But uh, at town uh, hall, we kind of unveiled the uh, area in the in the main hallway there, where we have the plaques for uh, Jack McFeely, Helen Cleary, and Frank Gross. That uh, you and the other selectmen uh, kind of put that program together at the last town meeting, and uh, we were able to uh, Marion Harrington. Put, put her talents to work and, and came up with some nice plaques and a, mm -hmm. and a header for that. And uh, so it's right outside the, the Selectman's main meeting room. Uh, very nice area, uh, tribute to those folks. And uh, we hope to add to that. Uh, I think there are a lot of folks, I think we'll have a lot more plaques up there before we're done. So many people have given so much to the town and uh, I think we'll probably bring some names forward again in the spring meeting. Uh, it looks great. I thank to you and Marion for uh, getting that done, I think it's a great tribute to people. So it looks yeah. great. Uh, it I hope, great. hope people will take a moment and take a look at it. It's and, fun and to do that. Great idea. I think you had the idea, but listing all of the different, all of the different committees and uh, groups that these people had participated in over their careers in helping the town. Uh, it's, it's just a, a nice way of saying thank you. Yeah. So thank you for getting that done. Well, thank you. Uh, I didn't really do much. So uh, give Marion the credit. Um, so the other thing uh, related to town meeting, obviously, is the budget. Um, we have uh, our budget is usually Article 5, and that's coming up. Uh, we've started putting that together. We have our new finance director, Julie McCarthy, who is doing a great job. Um, she has been working on that with me, uh, obviously, with all the department heads. Um, and then the two, well, the three, if you count Tri-County, the three different school systems, uh, Tri-County, KP, and uh, mm -hmm. Norfolk Elementary. We got the train going by, so we got a little rumble coming through here. And uh, so we're at the we're at we're right about where we are uh, every year, uh, the same spot. We're at this point we've kind of gathered the, uh, the wish lists and, and looked at uh, our revenue. Um, we're in the five to seven hundred thousand dollar gap area, uh, so we've got some work to do to to close that to come up with a balanced budget uh, as we go through. The, I encourage people to watch the advisory board meetings. Um, the selectmen will be in attendance at those as well mm -hmm. um, when we go through a lot of the depart bigger department bed budgets. And uh, but we'll be we'll be obviously making some uh, changes to those budgets uh, so that we can obviously come to a balanced budget by uh, within the next couple of weeks, and then we'll go mm -hmm. out to to print for uh, the May town meeting. Yeah, this has been, I think, one of the uh, better budget processes we've had in the last two or three years. Um, the schools have been, uh, specifically, I, I guess I'd talk more about King Philip. King Philip, um, we changed the process by vote so that King Philip had more time to develop their budget. They traditionally had to develop it early February, um, which is really a, a shot in the dark. And um, I don't blame them a bit for you know, padding the process, if you will, because it's much easier to go down than it is to go up. Yeah. So we always got what we all considered to be an unrealistic number. Uh, this time, while still a little bit aggressive, uh, far more realistic. And in a conversation I had with the superintendent just recently, I think that she'll be presenting to the school committee here in a very short order, hopefully before our next selectmen's meeting on Tuesday, um, a revision to that that will be even more favorable. So um, uh, 
hopefully that'll close some of the gap that we have. But that, that process has gotten a lot better with King Philip. Elementary school has been really good. Uh, their, yeah. their budget process for the last several years under uh, Ingrid has been tremendous. I would agree. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of, of items in the budget this year that um, I wish we didn't have. <laughs> We're getting a, a reasonably substantial increase in our health insurance rates. Uh, Norfolk County retirement continues to grow in a rather aggressive way. Uh, Tri-County went down. Good news there. Uh, yeah. That's just a function of fewer students, I believe. Yep. So uh, uh, we saved a little bit of money there, but uh, nothing really, nothing off the charts. Uh, it seems to be a pretty decent process this year. So. No, yeah, the departmental budgets are all, yep. um, you know, in the three to four percent type range. Um, we're not adding any staff anywhere. Uh, we've we've had some negotiations with some of the local unions. Uh, I understand the, that the police now have voted approval of our contract. Yeah, uh, and, and the fire right behind. Of oh, fire as of yesterday. Yeah, Great. So, so those are off the table. Yeah. Um, and very reasonable contracts for both them and us. Yeah. Very fair. Uh, and that's that's certainly been my experience in working with. I just want to say that in working with our local unions and negotiating these contracts, I found them to be very reasonable and very fair. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, so I, I think the budget process should go fairly well this year, or th as well as it can. I yeah, mean, we, we, well, never, we never have as enough, and there's always more we'd like to do. Um, but um, we, we think we're certainly able to, as we have for the last 12 years, <laughs> yeah. take care of our costs within our operational budget. So. Yeah. One thing that we're, we're one component of the budget that you know, I know you're, you know very well is the, is the new growth. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so we're having some, you know, not only do we obviously do we look at the expense side of the budget, but we look at the mm -hmm. revenue, and the revenue, um, in particular, new growth is is driven by whenever there's new development or renovations or uh, additions to uh, property uh, or subdivisions are created that generates new tax revenue that uh, is added to our tax base above and beyond the two and a half percent growth that is allowed under Proposition Two and a Half. Well, one of the, we're, we're kind of focused, myself, Julie, the finance director, and then Lorraine Fields, who's our, now I call, still call her our new chief assessor, although she's been here over a year now. Uh, we're looking at that. Um, Lorraine has expressed some concerns that, that the new growth will be down uh, a little more than I think Julie and I think it will be. So we're having a little di you know discussion process now to, to see what that is. But, but uh, we, we are, we do have a little bit of a dip in a way in our growth right now because because the last couple of years we had the well we had the solar panels which were a big mm -hmm. that was a big chunk of money uh, we had the the medical building medical building yep. um, you've got the lighting building coming on next year so that will yeah lighting building is you know it's gotten down to be foundations Park. and stuff yeah. now down in Shire yeah. Park so that that'll be a lot for next year so so I think you know I'm, I'm not saying I disagree with Lorraine I think we've got a little bit of a dip here but uh, but we do have, the, on the good side though, we do have a lot of development going on. Yeah. Like you said, Shire Park is really finally That's re pretty much maxed out now. Resurged. Pretty yeah, close. That's, yep. uh, yeah, the Island, Island Lightning's bought a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Five lots, I pieces. think. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have 106 and 108 Main Street, which mm -hmm. will start, um, I think, late summer, early fall in construction. That's a um, 40B project, but uh, one, I think. Friendly. Very, project. very friendly, very friendly 40B, 40B project, project that we're, yeah. we're looking forward to. Um, and I know there's already some interest in, in yeah. purchasing there, so I think that will go quickly. Well, it's still, it's still going to be, I think, a good year for new growth. And we have to, I think last year was a record year for us. Yeah, I it think was. it was the biggest number we've ever had. So, uh, um, so anything kind, short of a new record hard. is a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, we can't set a new record every year, but uh, I think new growth will still sustain itself reasonably well. It just won't be the record year we had yeah. last year. And we, and we do have uh, a lot of excise revenue, which is the motor yeah. vehicle excise tax. Um, so apparently people are, are feeling a little more comfortable in going out and buying some new cars. So that's, uh, yeah. that's good news for our, our, us on the revenue side. New, new growth is a, an interesting topic for people. Um, you know, there are people who would, would like to see nothing developed in town. There are other folks that want that continued growth. Uh, new growth is inevitable. Uh, it, it's something you can't stop. It's something you can't prevent. What you hope is it's something you can manage um, mm. so that we can at least manage the process so that we don't strain our infrastructure to the point that uh, we run into issues with police, fire, public safety, schools, whatever it might be. 
Um, and it, it's one of those things, um, like 10610 Main, which I believe is 40 or 44 units, um, high end, very nice units. Uh, I actually know a family that's going to move into one of those units. Uh, they're selling their home and excited about not having made any yard anymore. Um, but large developments that aren't restricted age do play a major role on, on our infrastructure, specifically our schools. And um, there's a, a kind of a disturbing trend uh, in the rural communities around here. Rentham, um, I was driving through Norton the other day and there's an enormous apartment development going in over there in Norton, uh, hundreds, hundreds of units. Um, I know there are three proposed in Rentham at this particular point, one under construction. Um, and we've got three proposed here in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. So um, it's something that we, we try very hard to work through and to manage. Um, 40Bs allow developers to circumvent our zoning. And so you get far more dense developments than you would under normal conditions. So it's just it's something that we have to pay close attention to. Um, our board's not directly involved in that. Uh, we can have input. Uh, because there are issues such as water and public safety and things of that nature, um, even just traffic and roads, if you will, that, that we have some say in. But the zoning, the ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, is actually the board that uh, governs or, if you will, negotiates yeah. on the 40B yeah. side in representing the town. But uh, it, it, it's, it's here, and yeah. we, we have to deal with it. Yeah, so like you said, we have 106 108 Main Street, we have. Uh, there's one on Cleveland, Cleveland Street, Street. Yeah, and there's one off of Lawrence Street, mm -hmm. potentially. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we have to, we're paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's Southwood, which is still potentially there. Southwood, I think, poses a little less concern to us in terms of the density issues because it's restricted age. Yep. Um, and so we don't have the issue of schools. Uh, certainly have the issue of traffic and all of the normal things you get with a development and, and certainly issues to neighbors and all of the things you traditionally have to look at. But <clears throat> I don't think they're in a position to strain our infrastructure quite the way some of these L developments are. Correct. I would agree. Um, so something to pay attention to. <clears throat> right. And so then the last thing I think we had on, on the agenda anyway, and uh, is uh, before we go to the free form, uh, is public safety. So we've, you, you and I are both on the Public Safety yep. Building Committee. Um, and we've obviously had uh, some more discussions about the public about the police, mostly about the police station at this point. Um, we, uh, you've got the timeline, I think. Uh, well, it, it's just a couple of things on it. Well, first, make sure folks do know that we are within budget. There, yeah. there, are, there are no issues around what we presented or our proposals, and both the police and the fire will be fully funded, uh, and they will meet all the specifications that both, both buildings need. So um, we're, we're confident in that, uh, as more importantly is the architect, <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, the project manager. So that's the good news. They're in the process of doing the drawings, the building drawings now. They should go out for bid early summer, um, hopefully by June. Uh, I thought by Maybe July? Yeah, July. Okay. Um, 30 days out, 30 days back, if you will. So yeah. we'll be starting construction on the fire, uh, excuse me, on the police department in probably September or October yeah. of this year. It'll take roughly a year to complete, give or take a little bit. Um, that project is also in concert with the REC. Yep. Uh, which will also is also going out to bid at the same time because there's a lot of com maybe you can comment a little bit on that because you were in the recent meeting regarding some of the common opportunities between rec and the police. Yeah, just uh, we have a the training room upstairs that uh, will be some shared space. Um, obviously, the elevator getting to the second floor uh, and the hallways, bathrooms, etc. Um, you know, the rec itself is is really just kind of two big rooms. It's uh, one big room where you have all the dispatchers working. And then you have another room that has all the IT, you know, radio communications and computers. Uh, but we're working, the we're, we have the same architect on both projects, so he's working on trying to put together a bid package that will uh, kind of share the cost of generators and mm -hmm. electrical hookups and all the kind of the infrastructure so that uh, those costs will be shared by obviously both both tenants. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a true win. Yeah. I mean, it's just the timing is perfect. So yeah. um, uh, you won't really see any change to the police department, police fire department for the next year. I mean, everybody will continue right the way they are. Um, once the police department is completed, the police will move out 
and we'll begin construction on the fire department. They will not have to relocate. Um, most of what we're going to be doing is really an addition with some renovation to the internal parts as well as heating and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, and that should begin, I think, in September of the following year, September of 17, and uh, hopefully about a year there. Uh, so September of 1918, we should have all of this done and behind us and two uh, pretty much up to date, very, very workable uh, facilities. So, um, and that puts a lot behind us. Uh, you know, our schools, our public safety, our town hall, our library, uh, hopefully that's it for a while. I would hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, but um, we're all grateful to the citizens for supporting these because they are critical to the, you know, they, they support the town. Yeah, there's the, you know, obviously follow Facebook. Uh, the town has a Facebook page and there's there's at least one other community page that's related to Norfolk. Mm -hmm. And a woman uh, wrote a nice thank you to the fire department the other day for... Uh, I saw that, that yeah. That they had yeah. responded so quickly in a time when she needed them. And uh, she, she went on to say I was... She was thankful that she had supported the uh, public safety uh, project because um, she saw how, how well the department provided service. So that was very nice of her. Well, it's, it's one of those that we hope no one ever needs. <laughs> yeah. And but when you do, you want them there. Well, when you, yeah. know, you live here long enough and you have a family, you, mm -hmm. unfortunately you're going to need them at some point. And, yeah. you know, I've needed them for kids with broken bones and stuff. And uh, they're fortunately nothing more serious than that. And, for us, it's been great. So, you know, they provide a lot of service to people who have uh, a lot more serious uh, events. So we thank them for their service. Yeah. Uh, just one more comment on KP. The new field was in use this year. Mm -hmm. New turf field. Uh, I think everybody's really pleased and excited about it. Um, I think you have a little bit of personal view on it because I think you had some folks playing on it. I do. Uh, so. Um, I'm glad that went in in place and everybody's happy and yeah, it's that's been, good it, news. It has it has been great and the, yeah. the weather even cooperated more so this spring. So I know the uh, my daughter Christina's playing on the uh, trying out for the lacrosse team this spring and uh, they've had captain's practices on the field for uh, already for over a month. They've been practicing and so I know tryouts start on this coming Monday, but uh, well, good luck. You know, we've had years where they haven't been. Able, last year, Steve, Steve Sherr was saying they had to Could, rent. Couldn't even get out. Yeah. Yeah, they had to rent space from uh, four kicks, um, and that's you know, that's it's hard playing high school sport indoors on on those size fields. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be a, it, it'll really help the level of uh, competition. I mean, they'll be better prepared when the season starts. It'll be it'll be nice having that field. It it, it is a great field. Uh, yeah. Couldn't be happier. Well, I think we covered all of the points we wanted to. Um, good news is is that uh, uh, we've had an easy winter and we won't have a huge deficit for snow and ice this year as opposed to the $400,000 we had last year. Yep. Uh, so that'll be a plus. Um, we, di we didn't talk about free cash, but we, we do have a pretty good surplus of free cash. Yep. Um, one of the things we haven't chatted about yet as a board, but we should consider is whether we want to stick a little bit more away. Mm -hmm. uh, our reserves now are up to about 1.2 million, I think pretty close to that, most we've ever had. Yeah. So um, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more away if we can. Mm -hmm. So. No, that'd be good. But uh, financially, we're in pretty good shape. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Um, so I would just like to thank uh, Chris Lawn for filming us today. Nice job, Chris. And uh, I apologize, we have the air conditioning on today because they're doing some work on the, the building here. And uh, so isn't if you've heard a little bit of a hum in the background, we apologize. That's isn't it nice they're working on air conditioning in March? Yeah, yeah. that is nice. That's pretty good. Uh, and of course, thank you to KD Woodhams, our station director, who continues to do a great job here at NCTV. And we thank you everybody here for doing the, the job that you do. And so just remind people that uh, May 3rd, first Tuesday in mm -hmm. May, will be our election. And May 10th will be our town meeting, 7 p.m. at the King Philip Middle School. So and hopefully a one-nighter. Hopefully a one-nighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoy the presidential election because I know it's just going along so smoothly. Uh, it's one of the more entertaining shows on cable TV these days. I, I'm actually looking forward to the, watching some conventions. They should be, uh, <laughs> particularly the Republican one, should be, should be the first one since the 60s. I think that'll be really entertaining to watch. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us and uh, have a great, 
Have a great spring. We'll see you in a month. Thank you.